Sinapis Business Competition is back with the same goal to award and recognize talented Kenyan entrepreneurs who are breaking barriers in pursuit of their lifelong dreams. Just like the mustard seed in Mark Chapter 4, Sinapis aims to grow these businesses into successful kingdom enterprises by empowering and equipping the entrepreneurs both spiritually and professionally. Entrepreneurship is not something that is taught extensively in schools. So we have unique programs that enable them to think through what they need to know before going on this journey and how they can navigate through the challenges that they are facing. So we believe that successful entrepreneurs is the solution to the current problems of unemployment, corruption, and many other challenges that we face at a national level, let alone the fact building a strong and vibrant economy. Last year, eight entrepreneurs made passionate pitches with the hope to walk away with the ultimate prize, but Catherine Mahugu of Chiswara and Desmond Nganga of ICT Fire and Rescue walked away as the winners. This year, seven entrepreneurs from the early stage and SME stage are not only looking to scale their business, but to walk away with a 1 million shilling reward provided in each category. These finalists have gone through a rigorous process, a successful application process. They have been interviewed and gone through three practice pitches. With 2 million shillings at stake, these entrepreneurs have to have their pitches pitch perfect. In addition, some of the finalists will get to join our Fast Track Accelerator program where they will receive one-on-one -on -one consulting with their businesses. Holding forth at the judging panel are five well-established entrepreneurs who are ready to bring their expertise. Starting the lineup is Edward Mungai, CEO, Kenya Climate Innovation Center KCIC. Edward Mungai has vast experience in developing financing mechanisms for SMEs with special interests in the agribusiness, renewable energy, water and sanitation sectors. Audrey Obara, Senior Investment Manager, Sweet Fund International. Audrey Obara is responsible for sourcing new investment opportunities, managing the investment process, evaluating performance of portfolio companies and identifying and building relationships with partners and stakeholders. Daniel Kamau, CEO Fusion Capital Limited. Daniel Kamau's expertise spans from real estate investing, private equity and market debt investing and management, deal organization, structuring and negotiation, due diligence, financial modeling and board management. Karen Serem Waithaka, Investment Director at Global Partnerships Social Venture Fund. Karen Serem Waithaka works as an investment director for an Impact First Fund. Global Partnership Social Venture Fund. The fund invests in enterprises that directly impact the lives of those living in the low-income bracket. Julian Kula, founder at EdemX and chairman of Beula City Limited, amongst others. Julian is the chairman of, amongst other companies, Beula City Limited, a group he founded to develop housing projects across Africa. He is also the founder of EdemX, a fintech company dedicated to providing modern solutions to current consumer challenges. Now that we've met everyone, let's get on with the business at hand. Welcome Beatrice to Sinapis Business Competition 2021. And we are looking forward to hear about gratitude. Yeah. You do have eight minutes to go through that. And the judges here will have eight minutes to ask you clarifying questions. Take it easy and the floor is yours now. Three years ago, I was daring enough to start the first breastfeeding clothing line here in Kenya. I decided to outsource, and when I started, I was coupled with a lot of challenges just at the execution stage. And these are challenges that many other entrepreneurs out there, whenever they are thinking of starting a clothing brand, are, are challenged, and some of them don't even start. So for me, one of the challenges that I got I got a manufacturing company that the minimum order that they could accommodate for me was a thousand pieces. I was determined and I said, let me start. The second design, another thousand pieces. Remember, I've not tested the market. So by the time I'm doing the third design, I was broke. By the time I was now doing that, the, the third design, it took too long in that company. By the time I was doing another bulk production, another like two months was gone. 
So those were the challenges, honestly, I was facing. And I was very frustrated and I was like, why can't I start my own production team? I was determined and I was like, even if it's too early, I didn't even have the financial capacity, expertise or even operational skills, but I brought the team together. COVID hit and our sales started to drop. So I thought about it. Three years ago, I was facing these challenges. I need to reinvent myself so that I may be able to survive in this market. So I decided, let me open doors to other brands that they may be able to be able to start their first clothing lines. And that is how Gratitude Stitch Plug was born. We accommodate at least a low minimum order for you that is still very affordable. Two, we offer quality design, stitching, and finishing at the shortest time possible so that you can be able to go ma to market. Apart from that, the same way as somebody held my hand, we're also offering coaching and mentoring of brands so that they may be able to uh, come up. We're also increasing our capacity to meet now the growing demand. Currently in Kenya, the annual clothing spend is around 197 billion Kenya shillings. And that is a mix of secondhand imports and made in Kenya. The ones that you are targeting is the made in Kenya brands that's around 59.3 billion. And the small group that you are looking at, the creatives there, are around 9 to 18 billion Kenya shillings. We are asking for 6.9 million because we want to increase in capacity, efficiency and increase our profit margins. In the next three to five years, we are seeing we are going to increase our capacity and create more jobs, around 120 jobs. And also we are planning on getting an EPZ license and this is to help us be able to help the local brands transit to export and be able to uh, meet the bigger international markets. Yeah. The 120 people that you want to employ in 2023, what's the makeup? Women versus men. The second question, coaching and training, is that something you want to start charging into the future and formalizing it? Yes, we want to charge, uh, sorry, the first question, the 120 is not in 2022, at least by 2024, we'll have grown to that level of capacity. And then we are going to mix at least mostly around a third will be men, and two thirds we are planning on women. Okay. Yeah. And coaching and training? Coaching and training, we want to at least put a small fee so that it's sustainable, and we want to be able to give it uh, we want to bring many brands that already have been running to be able to, not just me, but to be able to bring the brand owners to talk to them. Last year, I had a family, I had a close relative of mine who was diagnosed with a condition that required them to switch to gluten-free fluids in order to manage their condition. Uh, the biggest challenge was in the affordability of the gluten-free flowers, whose prices range from 400 to 700 shillings, compared to their gluten alternatives that sell at 80 shillings per kilogram. Moving deeper, I realized that it was not just my relative, but 395 million people in the world require to be 100% gluten-free in order to survive. 4.3 million of this population is in Kenya, and we have an additional 17 million Kenyans who, because of their current conditions, have to balance their gluten intake with gluten-free foods so as to manage the condition. This population is growing at an average of 9.5% per annum. And feeding this population requires 43,000 metric tons of gluten-free flour every year. 55% of that is from whole grain, and 45% is starch-based. 40% of the starch-based gluten-free flour demand is yet to be met, and this is equivalent to 7,000 metric tons, valued at 1.5 billion Kenya shillings. This huge gap exists because 80% of the farming population is comprised of smallholder farmers, who despite producing these products, end up experiencing huge post-harvest losses, amounting to billions of Kenya shillings. 55% of what goes to waste could actually be salvaged through dehydration, but unfortunately this is not achieved because the smallholder farmer lacks the technical know-how and the equipment in the form of dehydrators to convert this fresh farm produce into products that have a, higher, a longer shelf life. On the other side, we have gluten-free food processors who would have otherwise provided a market for these smallholder farmers, but unfortunately they experience uh, challenges of inadequate capital in acquiring the dehydrators, enough dehydrators to be able to convert all the fresh farm produce into gluten-free foods. They end up relying on government facilities provided by Kirdi and Kalro. But unfortunately, because of the large number of enterprises that are relying on these limited facilities, it becomes a challenge for them to operate sustainably and meet the demand consistently. 
Taliana Foods Limited therefore empowers the smallholder farmers with dehydrators in groups of 15 to dry the farm produce at source and convert it into dried flakes that they supply to Taliana Foods for milling and processing into gluten-free flours that are supplied to gluten-free food processors. We compete with the large, small and medium millers who, despite having the milling capacity, cannot be able to produce 100% gluten-free flours starch-based because of the contamination that takes place since they are milling a lot of gluten products in the same facility. And a small amount of contamination is detrimental to the health of the person who is required to be 100% gluten-free. We believe that in the next three years, we can be able to tap 10% of the market share of the starch-based gluten-free flour demand. And this is with an increasing annual uh, sales volume and earning before interest tax and depreciation over these three years. And having a total of 62 farmer groups, each of 15 members in our supply chain by the third year. This is with an investment of 20 million Kenya shillings broken down into investment on dehydrators that will be supplied by Vision Fund and internal investment to enhance our processing capacities and bring back the smile of our loved ones by making gluten-free foods more affordable and reducing post-harvest losses for our farmers. Um, I like that you're working with uh, smallholder farmers. How do you increase the number of smallholder farmers? Okay, so increasing the smallholder farmers, there are those that are working already with the uh, partners that we are dealing with. But we also are working towards partnering with more organizations that actually support the smallholder farmers. And so that will be a way of also increasing the number of farmers to be able to tap onto the 930 smallholder farmers that we want to work with by the third year. Okay. One last question. Are you considering uh, export market? Yes. To some extent we are later on. Mm -hmm. And that is why one of the partners who is a Ashoka Fellows, that's one of the key areas that we are looking into in the long term. Sido is an innovative way to automatically save and invest every time you spend. Our flagship product is a digital platform that rewards you with loyalty points any for every item you purchase and pay through the platform. After which, we automatically save and invest the loyalty points in secure financial assets such as um, treasury bills and treasury bonds that will earn you up to 10%. How does it start? All you need to do is dial our USSD code at zero charges and buy airtime, which is the only product we're offering at the moment, then you'll pay directly from your MPS at zero transaction cost. Yes, zero transaction cost. The next thing we enable you to do is to top up. This is a direct deposit you make into a digital investment account for as little as 20 shillings via your MPS, which will now be invested and earn you up to 10% in return. Then it's a locked investment account. Upon maturity, which is a 12 month lock in period, um, you'll be able to withdraw. Judges, I'm happy to report we've been able to pilot this. And in six months, we've been able to capture 700 users on our platform without any paid advertising. Our pilot gave us our key market. And this is an underserved population of the 1824. This is where financial habits are being formed. They're predominantly in university and college. And they're not being served mainly by the mainstream financial service providers. Through our projection, we can capture 9% of the 6 million Kenyans, 1824 uh, year olds, 500,000 in market, which will give us a revenue of 3.3 billion. However, going forward, we want to build relationship with merchants, whereby we can be able to give our users more loyalty points that can be saved for every spend they make at partner outlets, which will help us acquire our users. Um, more customers. For us, we're in the financial space mm -hmm. and we are competing against established players. That's a given. However, we are ahead of our competition as the platform that is just turning loyalty points into automated savings and investment. And also, we've been intro now introducing the minimum 20 shillings to start an investment cycle and also the minimum, uh, uh, minimum top up again of 20 shillings. Thank you, Sydney. Well, I know the question on your minds must be what do the projections look like? From 700,000 users, we hope to grow this to 250,000 users in just three years. Our break-even point at 100,000 will have hit it. Revenue projections from where we are will grow to 2 billion. 60% of the 17.5 million that we are requesting will be spent on marketing to romp up marketing activities in social media content creation and 20% will be used in product development. 10% uh, and 10% will be used in hiring talent and also in releasing other key features in our operations. Consumers are spending and spending and spending. And in our platform, the more they spend, we'll increase their savings. We'd like to invite you now to join us in this journey of building a financial technology company that will impact 100 million lives financially through increasing savings and investments. The first thing that caught me was that 5% uh, versus an 8% margin. That's because you're using a third party right now yes. for integration. Yeah. Yes. Um, on the part of 
the validation model. I mean, it's validated, yes, the scaling up. Are you going to, cons the, the 17.5 million you need, is that to basically increase your um, marketing and sales in that perspective? Do you believe that's going to be enough to scale or are you going to be looking to raise more money after that? Thank you, Judge Julian. That's a very good question. Um, it's a conservative to get us to 250,000 users. However, with that, we'll be able to further um, validate the model and do a follow-on uh, once we scale at that point. Will Beatrice Muihaki's pitch to help the local brands get exposure scoop the win? Or will it be James Nyamai's gluten-free nation? Has Sydney and Charles deposited a convincing pitch? Stick around for these answers as the rest of the entrepreneurs prepare to face the judges. To get more details and to register to Synapis, SMS SP to 22845. And we're back to Synapis Business Competition 2021. The competition has started off on a promising note, but it's not over yet. These two are hoping to make a winning case. Gentlemen, welcome, and it's great to have you here. Uh, this is Deed, and we look forward to hearing from you. You have eight minutes to present. Over to you. Thank you so much. My name is De Nis. And my name is Ed Win, and we are Deed. Deed. Now, let me introduce you guys to two individuals. We have Joseph, a college student enrolling for his first year of university. And we have Mary, a small business owner in Nairobi. Now, both Joseph and Mary, for their day-to-day -day operations, will require one key device, a computer. Joseph, obviously for his schoolwork, and Mary to efficiently run her business. However, as they approach the purchase of this computer, they will encounter three distinct challenges. Number one, they probably do not have enough money to go for a brand new computer. They'll be forced to go for a refurbished computer because they are typically 30 to 40% cheaper than brand new computers. Number two, they could not have enough education on the best match of their needs and their wants on this device. And number three, they will be approaching the purchase of this computer in a marketplace that is, number one, very disjointed, very fragmented, and frankly, far too broken. That's where we come in. At D Digital Solutions, we are wholesale computer refurbishers with an end-to-end refurbish-to-sale process with a strong customer value proposition with extended warranties and guarantees and customer education. And Joseph and Mary will benefit in the following ways. First and foremost, we will guarantee them above market grade computers at below market prices. Number two, we will educate them on the kind of computer that will best match their wants and their needs. And number three, we will give them what we call a lifelong after sale value that involves having us either buy back their older computers for cash or having them trade them in for newer, more advanced models. Now, in our market, it happens that it is very attractive because in 2020 alone, in Kenya, the IT market share, both hardware and software, stood at 635 million US dollars. Of this, 360 million US dollars went to the computer hardware sales segment, and of this half, or 180 million dollars estimated, went to the refurbished computer market. Currently, we have two customer segments, the retail and the wholesale. Currently, retail accounts for 40% of our sales and wholesale accounts for 60% of our sales. We reach a retail segment through online advertisement because we have a huge digital, uh, digital uh, presence and we reach our wholesale uh, segment through strategic partnerships with online marketplaces and, online marketplaces and, and countrywide laptop distributors. Now, we have competition in two, uh, in two categories of farms. There are those farms that actively refurbish but do not commercialize, and there are those farms that sell ready-made refurbished units. Now, the difference between us and them is that we refurbish and we retail. So we're able to guarantee quality and we're able to guarantee competitive prices for our clients. We also have a very strong customer uh, value proposition where we do consultative client education. We give extended warranties for up to one year, whereas our competition does that for three months. Um, <clears throat> we also have a lifelong after-sale services 
where we buy back your machine after your li the life cycle of the machine is done and also offer trade-ins for newer models, securing our supply base for refurbishing. We project that in the next four years, our growth will grow by 13% year on, year on. Our key drivers will be one, uh, widening our, our, our supply base and increasing our inventory because we have, currently we have unmet demand from the online marketplaces. We also increase our production and, uh, and, and technical capacity and aggressive sales and marketing. In the last one year to now close to two years, we've had impact. So for every machine that goes into a life cycle of four years, you save the earth 160 kilograms of carbon emissions. What impact did COVID have on your business? Because you launched in 2020 when there was a lot of online learning, yes. Um, and are you seeing that impact carrying forward or you know some of those sales would drop off? Now, COVID in essence was a perfect storm for us mm -hmm. because I'm sure you guys know that number one, most of those people who are in different institutions were forced to work from home. Mm -hmm. These people were forced to buy devices to enable them to effectively work from home, mm -hmm. computers. And number two, most households experienced a decrease in income, mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. That's where we came in. Mm -hmm. We offered competitive prices mm -hmm for quality devices that were the device of the season. Um, how do you ensure that what you're buying is not stolen property? First and foremost, we have to verify our suppliers. Most of our suppliers are not local. They source from international markets. And also, as we partner with the big online marketplaces such as Jumia and Killmall, these are the machines that they have already sold to their clients. So we already verify that these are actual genuine units, Okay. basically. Okay. So it's not that for me, I'd come and sell you my laptop no, and say, please, no, okay. There's a model to it. All right. 7% of the consumers of, of poultry prefer Kenyaji to, to broiler. On the other side, where when you look at what population, what we see in the marketplace daily, when you go around in the marketplace, you don't see the Kenyaji chicken. Today, if you left here and your kids call you and told you, mommy or daddy, come with chicken, what goes into your mind? Not Kenyaji. And if they told you Kenyaji, you're taken back. You're like, where do I get it? But the only one place you're sure of is the marketplace, where there's the one guy who sells it there in the most energetic way, and slaughters it there behind there, puts in the paper bag that is banned by the government and gives it to you. If you're caught out there, you don't know. He doesn't care. He's not part of it. That's the story. So the biggest problem is two out of every three supermarkets would want to stock Kenyaji chicken but they don't know where to get it. And if they get it, it is just difficult to have a supply system. And for those who get it, like you, when you go to the market today, it's so unhygienic. And you just don't, you're not comfortable. But do you have a choice? You don't. You still get it from there. So as an organization, what causes this? We've been able to, to identify that on one side, we have the buyer who is buying it quite unhygienically. And on one side, we have the, the, the farmer who is producing it as a very, 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 uh, poor, under very poor conditions where he's paid very low for his chicken, number one. Number two, he cannot feed his chicken with, in the most nutritious way because of the cost of it. Who makes the money? The broker in between, from the village to the marketplace. There's a broker at every point for chicken. So what's our solution? Our solution is we are providing an end-to-end -end supply system, an end-to-end -end supply chain where we are controlling from the production to the marketplace in the most hygienic way. And how are we doing this? First of all, we are doing an incubation process cost in the most cost effective way using solar energy. We have a farm that we're doing our own incubation. We also work with farmers. We're using LPG gas for brooding. That brings down our costs because the whole idea is to work on cost reduction. Second part is production. We have a core, we have, we have a core dependence with farmers where we are giving the farmers inputs in terms of feed, in terms of chicks, in terms of training. Then in return, they're giving us raw material for our feed, for feed production, and grown chicken. These grown chicken are as a result of the chicken that we give them as chicks. And we are selling to them. We are not buying it from them. We are, they are not, then we are not giving it free. We are selling it from them. Then the combination of the farmers who are out, outgrowers and also ourselves who are the producers, we bring it to our grading center. We slaughter some for the uh, package for the restaurants and hotels, and others we sell as live birds. How are we selling the live birds? And that's the biggest question. Now, this chicken, you find it in the marketplace, and it's part of our franchise system, where we are saying, we are going to bring the chicken to the market using a franchise system by putting a container in the market, which is, has an abattoir in itself. 
with where you can go and buy it hygienically. When you live here and somebody tells, your child tells they want chicken, you can quickly call the, the abattoir, the small guy in the franchise in the marketplace, tell him, change for me, Tano, I'll pass by there, they're packaged, in this format, you carry and go home. You feel nice about it. In terms of use of funds, if we are able to, we are winning this, by the way, we are winning together, and <laughs> very important to note that. What we want to do, we want to increase our franchises. We are looking for capital because the moment you sell supermarkets, what do they want? They want a, a credit period, and you, we need money for that. Also to increase our incubation. In terms of impact, we are working with farmers. As I said, we've increased our income to the farmers by almost twofold, from 52,000 to 72,000 shillings. In summary, Kenyeji is the best product that can be used to change people's lives. Trust you me, today, if you focus on Kenyan chicken, we'll be able to take away poverty from many families. With the supermarkets, why are you interested in supermarkets? Because then they will give you 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, they will last for 90 days credit period. Yeah. Whereas if you go the direction of uh, franchised, hopefully branded shops, then you're talking cash business. We are focusing on the supermarket because if you look at what I said in terms of our customers, it's a top to the bottom person, they're both our customers. It's very, very difficult for some people to walk into the marketplace and pick their chicken, but they would walk the supermarkets. Will Dennis and Edwin's deeds earn them the grand prize or will it be Charles Mokaya's talent as the chicken whisperer that will bag the cash? <coughs> Don't count your chickens before they hatch, they say. See you after the break. To get more details and to register to Synapis, SMS SP to 22845. We are near the end of Synapis Business Competition 2021. Two more contestants are yet to face the judges. Let's hope these exercises carry him to the million. We know it takes sweat and blood to build business like the one you built and to the levels of turnover that you build a capital bakery. Uh, but we're here to hear more, so enjoy. Have you ever been in a position whereby you just want to take bread for breakfast, but something crosses your mind to say, oh, I don't think bread is healthy for me to eat. What then happens? Welcome to Capital Baker, the home where we're going to redefine the bread and the bread healthiness in the market. People are becoming more conscious about the health they take and what they're taking. Most of the bread in the market happen to be the unhealthy bread, and indeed, because they are of simple carbohydrates, that's the majority of the breads are there. We're here to define and give a solution to this. Our solution, simple. Well-branded bread that gives us to give us a definition of a space. We want to be known in this space of bread and the people providing the most healthy bread that you can ever take. So that if you had gone away from taking bread, we want to bring you back and you enjoy bread knowing that you're taking a healthy thing for the thing. Our bread is well-branded and as a foremost, something of the price cares of people. We have a margin, good people who are scared of price, so we need to balance the nutrition and the price that the model. Does it, this have any space in the market? So how does this space, when it's simplified, look like in terms of the competition? We have one, the products that are always, you know, there's bread everywhere. In every supermarket you get bread and in other places you get bread. But we're defining the place to simplify it. We have the non-nutritious bread on the end. The other bread is known just for the for other reasons, not for the other reason. So where we want to jump in, we are jumping that space, the white space, to occupy and to be known for the heavy reasons, whereby we in the competition cleaned up space. If the other players in the market we want to be known and so far they're not established in the same volume. Uh, the model, we have modeled our business so that to be able to get that, we model such that we have the two niches of people incorporated, the price sensitive and the middle class who happen to be more ingredient sensitive. So our process starts with getting them uh, what to get the raw materials from the manufacturer, gets, gets the unique formulation to make sure that by the end of the day we have the complex carbohydrate nature which is the health purpose of it. Then you get a product out, they go to our distributors, they use the distribution channels that we have established. Uh, at current, we go through the distributors and they go to the dukas, which happens to carry the 80% of the sales, and that is our model of selling, and that is the space we are marking. There are other means of direct selling to, uh, to get the client, to get the other niche of the market. In future, we are looking at the progression in the same space, that coming soon, we need to have the first uh, ATM. It's an automatic seller machine for the bread, and also incorporate other carriers for the bread business. In, indeed, for faster scaling, even go to the franchise model to get in that. We established in 2015. Oh, yes. 
And since then, we started with zero distributors, 140 loops. We have managed to scale that, 25 distributors in the region, over 7,000 loaves bakery, and employing over 52 employees. Financially, how does this look like? The investment you're looking at is a 70 million need. First of all, you need to revamp our factory to get to another high, to get to, to uh, occupy more volume. And you look at our governance, we need to enhance it and make some key hiring so that as we are scaling, we're making higher volumes that need more uh, elaborate systems of the same distribution network and of course the working capital that we work with. The growth plan is this. We are currently in Mombasa and Kilifi and Kwale. Then we move uh, with the, the investment, we using our model, we move to the Taveta as we're increasing our process in the, in the three previous counties. Uh, the further scaling in the, in the, uh, with the further investment, we move to the other counties of Kajedo and finally move into Nairobi. In terms of challenges, you know, what challenges are you facing? Because it sounds like all is going in the right direction. Actually, there's no business without challenges, yeah? If you look at even uh, the trying to scale up and move to look at other, mo uh, other models of distribution, it's trying to mitigate what the current has started about the cost of distribution. Yeah? You look when you're going growing, but the cost of distribution tries to bring you down. So two, and when you try to make an entry into the market, the competition try to see what is eating it. So the competition is always pushing there. The cost of its business, uh, the running business, the cost you have to keep. So we tend to keep in watch of that. And as part of our looking at, if uh, one of the points, the key hiring and enhancing of our governance, we'll be able to get advisors on board and I think so that they worry about looking at the, the big picture out there as you worry about making sure that bread is consistent and it's the same one you're getting. Out. Food is associated with all sorts of pleasure. There's always a good feeling that comes around food. Birthdays, anniversaries, coffee dates, and even breakups. It's always around food. But there's something about food that when it's placed at a convenient place, then it becomes accessible to its target audience. That is the art of street food. From Nigeria, we have Moi Moi, Zege in Tanzania, Rolex in Uganda, and our own Smoky Mayai. These are very convenient, affordable, and quick street food that are for all ages and people from different social backgrounds. But how available are these food on the streets, really? We Kenyans love street food, but we don't trust it. Hygiene and sanitation have become the biggest barrier and risk. When was the last time you happily enjoyed your street food without worrying about hygiene or stomach upset? We noticed that 85% of the population ate street food as often as three to five times a week. 55% of the overall population were really concerned about the hygiene standards of the street food. 45% of this population were willing to pay a little more extra if better services were going to be offered. We Candy Fresh Kenya would want to solve this problem, but we realized that as we'll be solving this problem, we'll also be creating an empowering component for a very significant segment in Kenya, the jobless Kenyan youth. So what we've done, we set aside ourselves as a social enterprise with an innovation around food on wheels concept aimed at creating, um, aimed at delivering safe and affordable street food while also creating employment opportunities for these youths. How we've done it, we've ensured that we source, we prepare and we package this street food at a highly standardized uh, place. We have been able to source our supplies from highly accredited institutions like Farmers Trades Limited, Imboga and Chicken Basket. The supplies are then brought to our storage unit in Kisumu and Kakamega. From these storage units, we ensure proper refrigeration of these consumables. Our storage unit is then able to supply our kitchen units in both towns. We prepare. We have incorporated these youth as street food vendors to come in, be able to purchase these goods, go sell to the consumers. And what we offer to them, we offer to them the food vending trolley at a dollar daily where they are able to lease to eventually buy these products. We also offer vendor training with other institutions like the Kenya Chambers of Commerce and the Young African Leaders Initiative. 
we have then reinvested these profits to see us purchase a trolley at a time and grow our vendor base to 45 in two towns. We have increased our vendors' average income by 40% and through our COVID-19 resilience program, we've been able to sustain over 100 vendor households. We are requesting for 6 million Kenyan shillings in investment to see us upgrade our Kisumu kitchen to be able to serve 30 more vendors, two more kitchens in Nakuru and Eldore towns by 2022, marketing and consumer brand awareness, as well as inviting our investors to sit in our advisory board. This will enable us in 2022 uh, be in four towns, having generated um, 65 million Kenyan shillings and created over 100 jobs. In the next three years, we will be in eight towns, having created more than 800, 200 jobs uh, with doubled our revenues. How do you ensure that a vendor with a candy fresh trolley doesn't supply their own food? Uh, because they are branded candy fresh and then, you know, how, how do you make sure that they only purchase uh, from, from candy fresh? Thank you. What we have been able to offer is quite different from what they used to have before. Because with how we offer, we offer preparation and efficiency. This is something that it took them time to prepare. So right now when they think about saving time vis a vis the sales that are going to come by them getting from us, the assurance is there. So they prefer actually getting from us because we are saving on their efficiency and the time and through us they are able to make a little more than the way they used to do before. And, and do customers know Candy Fresh? Does a customer walk in say, I want to buy from this trolley because I know it is Candy Fresh or is it, have you built a loyalty base? We are looking into number one, creating brand awareness of Candy Fresh because there are already existing institutions in the market that are well known for that. But what we have done is we have set our sights by number one, having very clean trolleys because across the streets we have all kind of trolleys available. So once our consumers are able to spot our trolleys, number one, by being clean, number two, by just having a brand of our own, they will notice that that is candy fresh. And again, we offer more products than what the other vendors are offering. All the contestants have pitched and now it's time for the judges to determine whose enterprise stood out. I think they, they definitely have something amazing and is doing this on my side because yes. so, yeah. with an agonizing and analytical deliberation the decision has been made so friends i think we are in agreement i think it seems like we have made it to the shortest and even from the shortest we have kind of a winner right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. this is true yes. and now it's time to find out which two entrepreneurs will walk away one million shillings richer in investment. Very good. So, uh, finalists, you did a great job today. Uh, it was quite exciting. Uh, and we've seen you progress over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, it just brings us such joy to see uh, where, you, uh, where you came to and, and given where you started from. So uh, just as we uh, begin to move towards the final award, let me first of all uh, thank the judges. Uh, you guys were great. Uh, you guys have got full plates, but uh, you did a wonderful job. And I think both affirming what our uh, finalists are doing as well as asking hard questions. And there are hard questions to continue to address. Uh, but thanks very much for your time. I want to thank the KTN staff. You guys have done a, a great job as well. But most importantly, you, the finalists, uh, this is really uh, your day. Uh, and you've done an admirable job. And uh, we're just so excited. Synapis loves to, to uh, be able to come forward and support individuals like you. Uh, those that really uh, distribute passion or display passion for what they do. Uh, which you each do. Uh, those that really uh, drive for excellence, excellence in how you design and build your businesses and how you lead your businesses. And that is what each of you uh, do as well. 
Uh, so we're just excited to have been able to come alongside. Uh, as Synapis, uh, we strongly believe that, uh, that living one's faith out in the way one leads a business is really the way, the best way to truly share the love of Christ. Uh, and see God's kingdom expand. We did have to uh, land on winners, uh, and ultimately we did. So uh, let me start with the first group, uh, the early stage. Uh, and again, after tough deliberation, could have gone one of three ways on this, but uh, I think everyone's uh, very excited that we uh, eventually landed on James. James of Taliana. Yep, congratulations. So, we now move to the next group. Uh, just as hard to, uh, to debate. Um, and uh, again, we had four. Uh, four of you that were just tremendously strong. I, and uh, again, having to work through this, uh, but where, uh, where the judges landed on this was Caroline of Candy Press. Get more details and to register to Synapis, SMS SP to 22845. It's overwhelming. I think that is one word. It is super overwhelming. <laughs> this is just the beginning of the journey. And so um, I'm looking forward to bigger and bigger achievements. Synapis is extremely passionate about creating a community of entrepreneurs. We're very passionate about keeping them engaged and we offer them various areas of support through each and every stage of their entrepreneurship journey. So whether you are an aspiring entrepreneur who has a business idea or you're an entrepreneur who has been running your business for a few years and feels like you're stuck and you have the potential to scale or even if you've been in business for close to a decade and over and you know that your business has a lot more potential to reach very, very huge instances of growth we're here to support you so all you have to do is just go to our website www.synapis.org to learn about the various programs that we have to offer you to get more details and to register to Synapis SMS SP to 22845